Uh, Keith and his team were talking a lot about macro trends by and large. We're really going to get into micro trends, uh, things that go wrong when uh, we're all involved in actually trying to implement things for the companies we work for or with. And I think since joining Taxand in 2008, I've been more involved in actual hands-on implementation rather than being just an advisor from the sidelines than I've ever been. And so what we thought we would do is try and bring together uh, some of the experience that we've all had in those areas and uh, as a takeaway at the end, hopefully provide you with some ideas and a checklist, a point of reference uh, for you to think about and refer to uh, when uh, uh, you're involved in big transformational or other uh, uh, operational or tax projects uh, in your uh, businesses. Um, and I think uh, generally when you're involved in implementation, it is simply, uh, it's a surprise to me just how much is unpredictable. Uh, when you come into the office every morning and you think you've got a particular job to do, how actually the world is transformed very quickly. And um, so we took as our catalyst, this will work. There we are, I need to get one back. Donald Rumsfeld, everybody remembers Donald Rumsfeld, I guess, the, um, uh, the most analytic American Secretary of Defense there has ever been. And he famously in a press conference summed up his approach by saying, well, there are known knowns, there are things we know we know. There are known unknowns, there are things we know we don't know. And there are also unknown unknowns, the ones we don't know we don't know. And how do you manage unknown unknowns? Unbelievably difficult thing to do. Um, I could only think of two strategies, both extreme, both not applicable, but just to bring you into the subject. One is the military. The military, just you just follow orders. That's part of their strategy of dealing with that. And the other, more extreme, is NASA. They give you a pill for the things that they cannot imagine will happen to you. Neither of those is applicable to tax. Uh, I think, actually, uh, just, just make one other point, which is related to transfer pricing, which I think is, um, people are unaware of. And uh, it's the top one here about import-export. Um, we were recently involved with a group that, um, in its um, reorganization moved so much value out of Europe, although it kept Europe as a distribution hub, that actually its product, um, uh, instead of being EU origin, ceased to be EU origin and became non-EU origin. And that meant as a consequence that it was actually making false import and export declarations uh, and causing its customers sometimes to make false import and, uh, import and export declarations um, all, all over the world. So it, it's interesting how these things move from one area to another almost invisibly and uh, hopefully this checklist uh, will be uh, a useful reference point. But I just want to finish with, with three things. We believe implementation pitfalls are manageable. They're manageable through knowledge sharing, which you know, we could all be better at. They're manageable through active energetic management and through what if planning. You know, what if everything changes? What if you know, something unexpected happens? I mean, anybody who was at this conference last year had to, deal, had to deal with this in Germany where a volcano changed some plans for some people. Um, so what's the exit strategy? Many tax departments, many businesses do not think about that. Um, what about the most difficult topic, the unknown unknowns? We think it's progress if you move from an unknown unknown to a known unknown or a known known. That's progress, going back to our Donald Rumsfeld formula. And so uncovering the unknown unknowns is about sourcing knowledge. And in order to do that, we think, in an organization you need on a project to have a no-blame culture. Otherwise, people cannot um, contribute what they think um, uh, uh, is knowledge to a project. Fast reaction times, hugely important. The ability to be able to change quickly needs to be uh, part of the DNA, shall we say, of good project management. The appropriate use of advisors at appropriate moments. Um, using advisors is an art, as I'm sure every client in the audience knows. It's a difficult thing to do and it needs to be thought about uh, and, uh, and done well. 
and the active advanced management of key stakeholders. Again, underscoring a point that Keith made uh, for proactive tax departments and proactive tax strategies. So in some of our lives, people in the audience, I know we're familiar with practice directors. Practice directors, in my experience, sit uh, outside of the project. And so one of our propositions would be that actually for significant projects, um, clients should think about having a project practice director. Now, what th this person is not a funnel for discontent. By the way, this person might be internal, might be outside. You, there are no fixed rules. Yeah? But that person has no power to manage the project. He doesn't absolve the project team of responsibilities. He's not a priest, nor does he apportion praise or blame. But what they do do is they sit parallel to the engagement team and they act as a funnel for information and they regularly meet with the team leaders so that anybody involving on that project knows who the project practice director is, can go to them and communicate what they think is knowledge that is relevant to the project that they cannot get up through the main project team. So in that way, you maximize what is known, you would hopefully identify what was previously unknown, and you minimize the level of risk uh, in implementation. Uh, and uh, I guess, uh, as a final comment, so I just say three things. Um, uh, the, I, I don't know of any situation in which the project practice director has been used, but when we reflected on our experience of doing implementation, we thought it ought to be tried. So try it. The second one, for tax departments going forward, unless we're going to have tax departments of thousands of people doing compliance, working within a business, we need to embrace technology. And Christoph's example is a very good one about how technology helped a business actually move forward to its next stage. There have been enormous developments in tax technology, and tax professionals can't ignore it. The next decade will be a decade of embracing tax technology by large corporates. And lastly, we need to get out of our box within corporates. Many corporates put their tax departments in a box, pull them out when they need them, and get a bit of advice. We are moving into an era which is beyond that. And I'll just, again, underscore Keith's point, which is tax departments need to have strategies as they move forward, which are much more proactive and much more substance-based and which affect the day-to-day -day operations of the business, not just its form, not just something to be brought out every now and again for a piece of advice but actually deeply involved in day-to-day -day operations of what, the, of what the business is doing, and somehow we need to find a way of communicating that to boards. So on that note, I'd like to thank the panel, thank you all for listening, and um, wish you a great conference in Paris. Thank you.